So what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to talk about grip pressure. Now this video has been designed really because of you guys. I get lots of questions with my online students and I also see lots of comments on the YouTube videos as well when it comes to grip pressure. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal opinion, also things that I've read from the great Hogan over his time obviously of playing when it came to grip pressure, but also just take the opportunity to sort of show you some different angles so that you can see when you're next checking your golf swing exactly how your hand should be placed on the golf club, which I think will be more beneficial than anything else. The reason why I've chose to do the video like this is because I think it's fundamentally impossible to suggest whether you are personally gripping the club necessarily too tight. But I think by having a conversation about how you should take control of the club would help you identify whether you're gripping the club potentially too loose. Because like I say, I'm personally not somebody who buys into the analogy of holding it like a tooth paste pack, you know, or like an egg or a baby chick, those sort of analogies that have been floated around. I can't see that. This is a, a movement. This is a very swinging action. It's a fast paced movement. I sort of feel like if you held onto the club too loose, you can't possibly offer it enough stability. So that's why I struggle with it. Now, again, because I wanted to answer this question and I used Hogan's sort of discussion of, look, you need to take control of the club with the fingers. I felt that was the best way to talk about it. So what you are looking to do is when you take hold of the club, you want to make sure that you're taking control of the club in the fingers on the lead hand. You get the heel pad sitting on top of the club and then equally your thumb will sit down the trail side of it. Okay, And that will, should give you an element of stability. So you should feel like you've got the club, you're holding it in the fingers. Yeah, of course, you're not gripping it so tight that it hurts the tendons in your forearm and stops motion. But equally, you're not gripping it limp so that you can barely hold on to it. I don't agree with that at all. The trail hand then, your palm will sit on top of the club. You can do either an interlock and overlap between the, uh, between the fingers, but then again, the thumb sits down the lead side. And I think that's an important thing that sometimes golfers lose sight of, is ensuring that your lead thumb sits down the trail side of the handle and then your trail thumb sits down the lead hand side of the handle and that helps you apply i would say a element of neutral um, an element of neutral pressure when holding the club and it doesn't become too dominant one way or another so i think that's worth considering now there's only really two positions that I want to talk about when it comes to the pressure on the swing. And the first one is going to be the backswing. The biggest problem that I tend to see with golfers in the backswing position is either the arms bend, should we say, too much, or there's an element of regrip. Now, a regripping motion is basically when a part of the original grip position has come away from the club, and this will kind of create things like, as you can see here, like a dropping of the club, an overswinging problem. So if I now re-establish my grip, so I get the heel pad back on top of the club, you can see the position, it reorientates the club this way. Now the reason why it's so important is because golf is so difficult and the hardest thing in golf is returning the club face square. So if you're letting go of the club and then trying to re-grip it in the start of the downswing, the chance of you controlling that club face is extremely slight. So you need to ensure in the backswing position on that lead hand, you've maintained the same grip pressure and the same grip position that you started with. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily have a regrip, but your arms are too close towards your body, which means that your arms are bent, then you need to be thinking about using that trail hand to push the hands away from the body, or if you like, and maybe a better phrase, just to help you lift the arms up in the air. A good little drill for this is take the club lead hand only, tuck your trail hand underneath, and then just sort of swing the club up. And that's basically, if you just hold that position for sort of, you know, between five and 10 seconds, and just become very aware of actually what's happening, you'll start to feel the way that your lead arm is applying a force to push the club away, and your trail hand is actually helping pull you up. And those are the sort of feelings that you wanna have, whilst maintaining, again, a similar grip pressure and hold that you started off in the original position. If you can get a good backswing and a good grip, you're going to have a pretty repeatable golf swing because that's one of the things I tend to see with the difference between levels of golfers. Now, as we come in towards the downswing position, I think the biggest difference between, should we say, very good golfers and inconsistent golfers is when the club is parallel coming in towards the downswing. So with good golfers, we'll tend to see position like so, where the hands are pretty much over the ball when the club shaft is parallel. What I tend to see with most amateur golfers is they're somewhere more here where the club is much higher when the club is parallel and the hands are much further away from the ball, therefore lending itself to poor contact or a lack again of club face stability. So the question would be, well, how am I gonna use my grip to get into this particular position 
And I think this is again where you want to understand the functionality of that trail hand. See, as I come in towards my downswing, my right palm is really applying a pressure down and towards my lead thumb to help me get those hands moving over the golf ball into this type of position. If you're somebody who doesn't do that, let's say you pull on the club and this trail hand starts to come away, do you see what I mean? Then you're going to end up in that poor position. So you want to make sure that you are pushing and get, getting that unison of that trail hand applying pressure in towards that downswing. And again, just hold this position for sort of 10 seconds or so and start to bring yourself awareness of what's happening. I think generally speaking with students of mine, they tend to identify that actually they can feel their trail hand pushing down the pressure on towards the club, which obviously helps you get into a better position. If I'm honest with you from there, you know, you're just going to kind of swing through and depending how good your pivot is, it's going to be more indicative of how you finish. But like I say, I wanted to create this video. I wanted to talk about grip pressure and I wanted to talk about it in a way that I feel would be most beneficial. I think if you can go through, check your grip first of all, that you're taking good hold of the club. Check your backswing position to ensure no regrip. As I've discussed, if you're somebody whose arms are too bent, then consider exactly what you're doing with those up, that trail arm. And then in the downswing, think again about that sort of trail arm functionality. I think as long as you are keeping to those sort of principles, then effectively your grip pressure is absolutely fine. But I certainly wouldn't be gripping it light, uh, and hopefully that really helps. See you soon.